and sandwich interpreter for one of the local hospitals, hospitals here in Green, South Carolina. They asked me to share my story with you, and I'm very passionate about it. But I want to be careful that you not miss the, the point, because it's a touching story, but I don't want you to get so involved in the story that you, you miss the message. And the message is, don't allow your past to dictate who you are, but instead use that to help others and, and to become the person you were meant to be. Fifty years ago, my parents moved from uh, Guadalajara, Mexico, to the United States, because my dad had a, a dream of a life full of opportunity. Soon afterwards, my parents found out that they were expecting a set of twins. Life was good, everything was perfect, except that they had no idea that our world was about to take a di uh, different turn. Something tragic was going to change our life forever. The day I arrived when my mom was going to deliver, uh, my father was in the waiting area, pacing back and forth, <coughs> waiting for the um, baby to be born. And uh, all this time, something really wrong was happening in, in the delivery room. My mother delivered the first baby, and a young nurse picked up the baby and showed it to her and congratulated her for her son. Congratulations on your son. And then the, all of a sudden, the doctor nudged her and gave her a stern look. Surprised the young nurse, and she just went over and handed the baby to an older nurse. And then here comes the second baby, and that was a, a little girl. And she did the same, handed it to the older the nurse. Well, they, they continued taking care of my mother and cleaned up the babies, and eventually everything was done and everybody left except for the oldest, the older nurse. She wrapped up the baby in a um, blanket and brought it to my mom. And then she started going towards the door and my mom stopped her and said, wait a minute, two babies. And my mother didn't speak English, so she was gesturing, two babies. And the nurse said, no, one baby. And then my mom said, wait a minute, wait a minute, two babies, one, two, where's my second baby? And uh, they went back and forth, in, uh, gesturing, no one baby, no two. And then finally my mom realized what the nurse was saying. She started to yell. She started to yell for my father. And she was saying, uh, no, I want my babies. Later on, my father came in and found out what was going on. And then he started going around asking for help, wanting the return of his son. And um, he would ask that person, they didn't understand, and he would ask that person, they wouldn't understand. They started to yell and to beg for the return of their son. Everybody there heard him, but nobody understood what was being said because nobody spoke their language. My brother was kidnapped at birth. My parents believed it was the doctor with the help of the nurse. My parents were poor and they didn't speak the language. So um, as much as they tried, they could not get the help that they needed to um, search for my brother. Eventually, they had to come to the conclusion that they can't fight against the hospital, they can't fight against the doctor, and they can win. So they had to accept the fact that they no longer had a son. Um, Um, my, uh, my brother was never found, and my parents never got over the, the lost. Eventually, um, they had to continue with their life, but it was hard because we lived in a home <coughs> full of feelings of sorrow and of loss. Um, You see, most of us have had a, a person, a loved one, die. And eventually, um, time helps lessen the pain. 
and all that's left is the memories that we have with that loved one. But it's not so with a child who has been kidnapped. There is no, no closure. The heart never heals. And there's just unanswered questions. Where is he? Is he alone? Is he crying? Is somebody hurting him? Does he think we abandoned him? Those are just um, lingering questions that you live with. I don't know how old I was when I first heard the story about my brother, but I remember how it impacted me. I, um, I, as a little girl, decided, you know what? When I grow up, I want to learn English, and I want to help those people that don't speak English. Nor did I know that that meant becoming a medical interpreter someday. Uh, years passed, and my dream of becoming a medical interpreter came true. It wasn't about a job. It wasn't about a career. It was about a lifelong passion of uh, becoming an interpreter. Let me share one of the interpretations that I had that changed my life. One night, I was, I was um, working late at night at the hospital, and I got paged. 911, that means drop whatever you're doing and run. So I ran to the pediatric floor, and I was shocked to see a group of people consisting of 20 nurses, doctors, hospital staff, policemen. There was a man with the policeman. There was a mother here holding a baby, and they were both crying hysterically. I was looked into the nurse and said, what's going on? And she told me it was a, an attempted child abduction. And I thought, okay. One of the nurses came and took the baby from the mother's arm and went into the room and locked her to sleep. And I went over here to the mother and held her arm and rubbed her back and said, you see all these people here? None of them is going to let anything happen to your daughter. So please tell us what happened. So she proceeded to tell us the story about how this man came into their room and tried to take her little girl while they were asleep. The only thing was that that man didn't know that our hospital system had a special um, security program uh, that would not allow somebody like him to take a child. So that's why we were able to stop him from doing that. Um, she proceeded to talk, tell the story, and we went back and forth for about an hour. And eventually, uh, the police took the man away, and um, we walked the lady to another room and put her in another room so that she can feel safe. And we put a security guard there to watch her and to make her feel safe again. As I was walking back to the office, I was thinking about what had just happened. I just, like, it was just so different. So I was thinking about what just happened, and then all of a sudden, my whole body starts to shake. My knees start to weaken. And I'm thinking, what is happening? I didn't know what was happening. I turned around because I was looking for somewhere to sit down because I was starting to wonder if I was going to pass out. And um, but there was nothing, so I just stood straight, and then I just decided, okay, what's happening here? And then it looked like my body figured out the greatness of what had happened before my mind did. You see, what happened was, I did for that lady what no one did for my parents 47 years ago. I became her voice. I was able to tell her story, her frightening story to everyone in a language that everyone present was able to understand. And because of that, she was given the help and the protection that she needed. You see, life had come full circle, starting with my brother that was kidnapped 47 years ago, and ending that night with the mother holding her baby, saving her arms. Yeah, I know, you probably think, well, it could have been any other interpreter that interpreted for her. But yes, it's true. And they would have done a good job because they're great interpreters. But it was I who needed the closure that that interpretation brought that forward. 
it's funny how life is because I went in there trying to help another patient, but it was I that was helped that night. It was I that came out the changed person. Friends, your past, as hard as it might seem, is not a mistake. It is the tool now that you can use to help others and to become the person that you were meant to be.